My mother-in-law made it clear that anyone unwilling to contribute to the household chores was not welcome in her home. She appeared to anticipate an apology from me, possibly even some remorse. Meanwhile, my husband sat next to her, a subtle smirk playing across his face as if he took pleasure in seeing me reprimanded. Contrary to what they might have expected, I felt an unexpected wave of calm wash over me. Then I'll leave. I stated with conviction, devoid of any hesitation. At that moment, I decided it was no longer my concern to fret over their actions or attitudes. It dawned on me that they would eventually have to confront the repercussions of their behavior. My name is Elizabeth, and I'm 40 years old. I balance a full-time job with managing our household. My husband, Andrew, and I have three adult children who have moved out to start their own lives. Andrew and I had envisioned this period as our time to enjoy together, but circumstances changed when my mother-in-law, widowed and needing company, moved in with us. Her arrival significantly altered the dynamic at home, which once was peaceful and shared just between Andrew and me. My job is demanding, often requiring me to stay at the office until past 7 p.m. When I return home, the sight that greets me only adds to my exhaustion. The living room is often cluttered with snacks and clothes everywhere. Andrew, meanwhile, seems oblivious to the chaos, lounging on the sofa with his beer and TV, barely acknowledging my presence. With no dinner ready, I'm left to handle the kitchen duties myself, my disappointment growing by the minute. During these evenings, my mother-in-law often emerges from her room to criticize me, claiming my late nights and business trips are no excuse for neglecting home duties. She accuses me of failing as a homemaker, turning every small issue into a critique of my character. Over time, I found that responding or trying to defend myself only escalates the situation. Instead, I've learned it's wiser to let her have her say and wait for her to calm down. This approach, while far from ideal, prevents further arguments and keeps the peace, at least temporarily. So I take a moment to absorb her criticisms and then redirect my attention to preparing dinner. Although her words sting, I persevere, knowing she'll eventually stop. What's harder to tolerate, however, is my husband's reaction. He seems to take pleasure in seeing me chided by my mother-in-law. Women should appreciate their husbands. You lack charm, she often repeats, and my husband echoes her, mocking me as I lay the dinner table. My anger isn't just directed at her. I find myself increasingly irritated by my husband's attitude. Despite my repeated pleas for them to start dinner without me when I'm delayed at work, they never do. When I finally get home, they sit idly by, waiting for me to serve them as if I were a servant. The dynamic in our home has worsened significantly since my mother-in-law came to live with us. Before her arrival, my husband was a partner in the true sense, helping around the house, cooking meals when I was late, and actively participating in raising our kids. But now, he's stopped assisting altogether and has joined my mother-in-law in her frequent critiques. It's both confusing and frustrating. She labels me lazy and incompetent, yet she's the one relying on us. She hasn't contributed financially, despite inheriting money from her late husband. Instead, she squandered it on luxuries, quickly running through her funds and even accumulating debt. Now, she lives with us, virtually rent-free. This tension started from day one of living together. She promised to be considerate, even bowing deeply to show her sincerity. But merely a day later, she reverted to her old ways, criticizing me for neglecting the housework. Initially, her sudden change was almost amusing, but it quickly turned serious. She accused me of being a poor wife because of my focus on work, criticizing not just my housekeeping, but my professional commitments too. I tried explaining that my job sometimes demands late hours, but it seems to fall on deaf ears. Despite my attempts to explain, my mother-in-law didn't listen. Instead, she suggested that I take a part-time job at the local supermarket as if that would somehow be more suitable. She had a fixed idea of what a daughter-in-law should be like, but had little understanding of the realities of my job. Living with her became increasingly challenging, 
Any dissatisfaction she had, like with our meal choices, would lead to complaints. Even simple routines like breakfast turned into issues. We used to grab bread or buy lunch, but she disapproved of these habits. Reluctantly, she started following our household rules, but not without constant grumbling. Dinner time became the focal point of contention. She insisted that it be served promptly at 7 p.m. with at least three side dishes and demanded that everyone eat together. She claimed this was what normal families did, but my work often kept me well past 7 p.m., making her demands impractical. Her rigid expectations clashed with the reality of my professional obligations, which were essential for our financial stability. She doubted the necessity of my job, suggesting that my husband Andrew's income should be sufficient and insinuating that my work was more about personal choice than financial need. When I looked to Andrew for support, he simply dismissed the concerns, suggesting I would learn my lesson eventually. His lack of defense only deepened my frustration. It seemed he was content playing the role of the indifferent, sympathetic husband who was seemingly incapable of contributing to household chores. This behavior irritated me even more because when we first moved in with my mother-in-law, he quickly aligned with her instead of supporting me. Since then, they have both seemed to team up against me, treating me unfairly. Whenever I attempted to involve Andrew in the housework, my mother-in-law would interject, declaring such tasks were the wife's responsibility, and Andrew did nothing to challenge her. This change in dynamics puzzled me, as we used to collaborate well before. Eventually, I started noticing a pattern. Andrew smirking each time his mother criticized me. It dawned on me that perhaps he was uncomfortable with the fact that I earned more than he did, and maybe he resented taking on household duties for that reason. This realization made me question many aspects of our relationship and how much had changed since his mother moved in with us. Andrew can't voice any dissatisfaction as he is traditionally seen as the family provider, but I suspect he's been relishing this situation since it began. When my mother-in-law moved in, she frequently criticized my role in the household, openly questioning whether Andrew was truly the head of the family. This seemed to provide him with a certain satisfaction when I was scolded, revealing a side of my husband that I hadn't fully acknowledged before, even after all these years together. Following her arrival, I spent many anxious days contemplating what to do, the once peaceful atmosphere had been replaced by constant tension. My mother-in-law was incessantly problematic, and Andrew was proving to be unreliable. Before she came, I hadn't felt the need to make any drastic decisions. One day while I was out shopping, a neighbor approached me with a remark that caught me off guard. She suggested I should be more considerate towards my mother-in-law. Surprised, I asked her to elaborate. She confessed that she wasn't fond of her mother-in-law but didn't consider herself inconsiderate. Then she revealed something unsettling. My mother-in-law had been talking about me. According to her, I neglected all housework, our home was always a mess, and laundry was perpetually piled up. She claimed her rheumatism was worsening because she had to do chores herself, since her son, Andrew, returned home late from work. Hearing how I was being portrayed was shocking as a neglectful wife who relied on bread for every meal, leaving my mother-in-law to lament and complain. This narrative had begun to affect how people in our neighborhood viewed me. It became clear that the cold, less friendly reactions I was receiving were due to the stories my mother-in-law was spreading. Despite her small, frail appearance, she knew how to elicit sympathy from others, painting herself as a victim of a lazy daughter-in-law who shirked all household responsibilities. The neighbor's look was one of cold accusation, reflecting the impact of these harmful tales, feeling a deep sense of embarrassment that our family issues had become neighborhood gossip. I murmured a denial and quickly returned home. As I entered the living room, I found my mother-in-law absorbed in her TV show, snacking away. Please stop spreading rumors, I urged firmly. To my dismay, she just laughed and insisted, but it's true. 
something inside me reached its breaking point. If she was determined to persist in her falsehoods, then I would no longer uphold the pretense of a dutiful daughter-in-law. The very next day, after returning from work, I was met with the usual demands for dinner. This time, however, I bypassed my husband and mother-in-law's complaints, went straight to the kitchen, and prepared just a single serving of instant ramen for myself. Seeing this, my mother-in-law's face turned a shade of crimson, her protests growing louder. So, you're just proving you're the worst daughter-in-law not doing any housework, huh? Fine, if that's the way you want to be, she declared angrily. As I quietly enjoyed my noodles, she was left speechless, eventually turning to my husband, seeking his support. When he approached me, I laid out the whole situation. Mom's been telling everyone that I'm a terrible daughter-in-law who neglects the housework. When I confronted her, she doubled down on her claims, so I've decided to just stop doing chores altogether. I'm only doing what she's been telling everyone. I shared the encounter with the neighbor from the previous day. My husband, looking concerned, tried to mediate. Mom probably just exaggerated, don't be so stubborn, he suggested. Despite his mother clearly being in the wrong, he still sided with her. Exhausted and without the energy to argue further, I discarded the empty ramen cup, ignored his pleas, and retreated to the bathroom. There, I did my laundry and took a bath in solitude. As I soaked, a wave of relief washed over me. It became clear that regardless of my efforts, I was always going to be labeled as the bad wife. From that moment on, I decided to stop engaging in the household tasks my mother-in-law complained about. She bemoaned the lack of freshly baked bread for breakfast on my days off, but I remained steadfast in my new resolve. When I woke up and stepped into the living room, my mother-in-law demanded that I go out and buy bread immediately. In response, I retorted, Why don't you buy it yourself? I'm such a bad wife. I'll only buy my share. From now on, you'll need to pay for your food or handle it yourself. With that, I ignored her protests, made myself coffee, and quickly ate my bread. As I watched her reaction, a part of me worried that I might have been too harsh, but considering all I had endured, it felt justified. After finishing my breakfast, I tidied only my part of the cluttered living room and settled down with a book. The calm was soon interrupted by the doorbell. Glancing at the monitor, I saw a group of more than four elderly people, all familiar faces, standing there with visibly upset expressions. Confused, I watched as my mother-in-law rushed to greet them. They filed in, one after the other, and I was taken aback when one of them abruptly berated me. I hear you're the wicked woman who doesn't even care for her mother-in-law. These visitors were my mother-in-law's siblings and their spouses. She had spread false tales of mistreatment. She accused me of not feeding her properly and not allowing her to bathe, pleading for their intervention. Being the youngest of four, with three elder siblings, she had a significant support network. Now, with spouses included, there were eight elderly people in my living room, labeling me as some kind of demon wife deserving of retribution. Their accusations made me break out in a cold sweat from fear. This is a misunderstanding. I finally managed to say, my voice trembling. But then, the eldest brother raised his voice, pounded his cane on the floor, and yelled, Stop making excuses! The others joined him, demanding that I apologize and reflect on my supposed misdeeds. Just then, my husband arrived, drawn by the noise. When my mother-in-law's brother turned to criticize my upbringing, my husband didn't defend me. Instead, he joined in the criticism, adding to the chorus of voices against me. My affection for him vanished in that instant. I had always believed my husband was a kind person until we began living with my mother-in-law. It became clear that he wasn't kind. He was just weak, easily influenced by those around him, and unable to withstand any form of pressure. During a heated discussion, one of my mother-in-law's brothers took my husband's criticisms to heart and suggested a divorce. To my dismay, everyone seemed to agree. My mother-in-law then offered me a so-called second chance, provided I promised to change and better serve her and my husband in the future. 
Trying to hold back tears, her siblings urged me to be grateful, claiming I would never find a kinder mother-in-law elsewhere. They even decided to implement a rotating schedule, taking turns each week to check whether I was keeping up with the household chores and attending to my mother-in-law and husband's needs adequately. Once their plans were set, everyone appeared content and decided to celebrate their reunion with a sushi outing, leaving the house together. As they departed, my mother-in-law couldn't resist a parting shot instructing me to ensure the house was clean and the laundry done by the time they returned. I was left to wonder, how had things escalated to this point? Alone in the cluttered living room, tears began to well up. Our marriage had been happy until my mother-in-law's intrusion. Now I found myself the subject of complaints from all the relatives despite doing my best. Tears streamed down my face, a mix of sadness, regret, and anger. A few hours later, my husband and mother-in-law came back. I was still sitting in the disarrayed living room. My mother-in-law smirked at me, her words sharp with disdain. Leave, we don't need a wife who can't do housework. I told you to clean up earlier, didn't I? Seemingly tipsy, she demanded that I leave immediately. My husband, with a grin on his face, joined in, thinking his support would ensure I complied quietly. I had reached my limit and no longer had the desire to exert myself for them. Fine, I'll leave then, I said calmly as I stood to exit the living room. Behind me, I heard my mother-in-law and husband laughing, probably thinking I was just bluffing. But their reactions didn't matter to me anymore. I went to my room, packed my things, and left the house without another word. About a week later, my mother-in-law called me in a panic. Andrew says he has no money. What does that mean? She asked frantically. I responded with the stark truth. Andrew earns only a third of what I do. I've been covering most of our expenses and the house is in my name. I'm planning to sell it, so you'll need to leave soon. She thought I was joking until I urged her to check the bank statements in her drawer. There was silence on the other end of the phone as the reality of the situation set in. Then, the begging started. She pleaded for me to return, apologizing and saying Andrew was lonely. But I was resolute and informed her that I would be proceeding with a divorce through my lawyer. I ended the call, ignoring her tearful apologies. With legal assistance, I filed for divorce, citing the unbearable behavior of my mother-in-law and the lack of support from my husband as reasons. The divorce was granted swiftly, and I even received a small settlement. When I explained the situation to my children, they were supportive, agreeing that the fault lay squarely with my husband and his mother. After the divorce, I sold the house, and my ex-husband and his mother were forced to move out, staying with relatives temporarily. Their stay was short-lived as soon they had to find a small apartment struggling to make ends meet on his modest income. From what I've heard, they now spend their days blaming each other for their misfortunes. Meanwhile, my husband has been sending frequent messages, asking for reconciliation, and claiming he has severed ties with his mother. However, I find these messages more of a nuisance than anything, and am considering blocking him to maintain my peace. Without their constant criticism... I feel liberated and ready to live my life on my terms, focusing on personal fulfillment and well-being. 